Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today what I'm going to do is a bottleneck fix for a buddy of mine. His name is Ben. Uh, he actually shipped me his fuel canister and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take that apart, show you guys how to replace the fuel pump. Uh, the process that I follow, you can do this if you're going to use the stock fuel uh, feed line with the filter and everything. Um, but what I'm going to do obviously is we're doing the bottleneck fix and then I'm also going to put some lines together so I can use the stock feed line with the bottleneck fix. So once we get to that point, you guys have a couple of options. You can go ahead and use some and line or braided line, uh, run run the feed up and then run your return to the back and then, and you could run it that way. Or you could use the stock feed line with a different return line and uh, put all that together. But like I said, today what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put one together to use with the stock feed line. I'm assuming you guys have your fuel canister out. So we got that on the bench. So I got the fuel canister. We got the 255 install kit. Uh, it comes with the pickup filter, um, the grommet, the replacement o-ring for the filter, the tool for the um, canister half to open it up. It's got the adapter for the pump to fit inside of the stock canister fuel tank seal. Um, so this is basically what you would need to do just to put a 255 in the stock in the stock housing and, and run it like a stock vehicle would be. Um, these are parts to do the bottleneck fix. So this is a Gates submersible fuel line. It is alcohol rated. Part number is 27. 097. Uh, you can search that right on Amazon. I think it's like $19 shipped to the house. Um, I'm also using Earl's stainless banded style hose clamps for the line inside. Two Summit bottleneck um, or bulkhead adapters, sorry. Um, unfortunately, when I bought these, they did not come with the washers. The last that I did did come with them. Fortunately enough, I had these on hand because when I bought them this round they didn't put them in the bag so I don't know if that's something that they've changed. But there's also a barb to and fitting that I'm using. This one is a vibrant part. Sorry it's probably hard to see because my gloves are black and so is the part. But um, that is the barb. The part number for that is 11216. That is a vibrant part like I said so you can search that right on Summit or Amazon. This is also a Allen head 6x1 machine screw. That's what I'm gonna to use to block off the fuel filter feed. And I'm also using JB Quick Weld when I put that together to seal the threads in to make sure that fuel's not gonna seep through the threads and then back out in the car, or out of the tank. The tools you're gonna to need to do this job is the little insert tool that they give you that comes with the install kit when you purchase it. Any kind of hex driver tool that you'll have for the machine screw you purchase. I'm using a pocket screwdriver for pulling the connector apart. Not everybody's going to have the terminal tools or uh, mini pick set that you can use to make the job a little bit easier. And I'm also using a sept bit with my drill that goes up to a three quarter. The three quarter inch hole is gonna give you enough room to have that hose come through. That's a five eighths outer diameter with the one that I'm using. So the three quarter gives a little bit of room so you're not just sitting there vibrating against the edges all the time wearing a hole in it. it gives it a little bit of room to breathe. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this guy coming apart. The first thing you want to do is get the electrical connector out. This one, when it came to me, was already undone. Let's see, the flash on so you can see this. When it came to me, this connector was already undone. Uh, you just got the tab, you squeeze it. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, work it out. And it'll come free. I don't know if, if it's never been undone. I'm trying to remember. But I, I can't remember if these did come with this slide lock tab in there. If it does have one, they are kind of a pain to deal with. But all you really got to do is try and lock this one quick. Alright, well that one don't want to lock. So we're going to leave that one alone, I guess. But anyway, uh, if it is, you just put your screwdriver on this side, inside of the connector, or the cavity here, and you just kind of push that lock over. To unlock it so you put put it flat against the side push it all through get it to unlock squeeze it pull it out that's just another connector i had that did have one in there it doesn't mean it's from a, from a sending unit with all the dirt and stuff we know it wasn't inside of the tank so like i said don't trust if that lock tab is going to be in there or not so like i said i'm doing this with a pocket screwdriver so what you're going to need to do is remove the wires from the connector here that way you can feed them through the hole that they have for the sending unit as well as the pump itself. So what I do, try and get you to see this here, is there's, a, you can see the blue retainer that locks all the pins into place. You can see that slightly inside of the 
connect right here. I don't know. It's hard. To, I don't have a screen on the camera, so it's hard to see what you guys can see. Hopefully you can. But what I like to do is if you don't want to put it in here sideways because you'll you'll damage and break the lock as well as just possibly slip it underneath of the connector. So go flat at it on a 90 degree. Push it up. Get it on the side. Kind of push it up a little bit if you can. And then you get it all the way up to the top here. Put your screwdriver under it. Pull it out. Sl be cool with it. Don't want to get too rowdy and break it. Come on. It's a lot easier with picks, I tell you. Uh, what am I missing here? Well, I'll just do it like this. So you pull that out. And then you're going to want to remember where your pins are. So, power on this connector all the way to the left. Well, I guess in the video it's all the way to the right, but if I was looking at the connector going in the car like this, so you got red is left, two sending unit wires don't matter, it's just resistance, and then you got your ground all the way to the right. Now there's tabs that hold these inside. I said with a, with a pick set, it's a lot easier to do, um, but you can just use the corner of the screwdriver, pull that pick out, or pull that tab out a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna do the sending unit one first. Just because those are the most fragile. Don't want to break those off. Um, so you just kind of pull the lock tab back. Slip the wire out a little bit. Push against it. Pull through. They move freely in the body, so you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on them, or you shouldn't have to, to get them to pull through. If, you, if you're having a hard time with it, don't pull any harder. You're probably going to break something. Um, either you don't have the tab pulled all the way out or the, uh, the wire's got some crud in it or something that's keeping that uh, terminal stuck in there. And then the last one, the ground. Do that one from the opposite side just so I can get the angle I work with. So get the corner under there and pull that tab back. So I'll try and do this so you guys can see it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the corner of the screwdriver and I'm getting it under the tab and pulling it back so it will release the terminal from the connector body. So, now that you got that out, you got your sending unit wires here, you got your fuel pump wires. First thing I do, well, I guess not the first thing, but once you get that wire out, now what we're gonna do is pull the sending unit out this one there is a lock where it locks here and a similar one up towards the top what well, all you really got to do is take the screwdriver put a little pressure on this side kind of twist it up and then you use this flat spot on the bottom of the sender here I, I do anyway to push against it and kind of just walk it out and then that pops off and you pull it straight through like I said you can see the channel where it rides so it's got a similar it's got the lock on the bottom and then it's got these guides here it keeps it through so and then you pull that off you set that to the side so now that we got the connector out of it put this over here with the connector itself so we're together you take the tool that they give you in the kit and you worm it in through the canister into the there's a skinny one and then you got these two fatter ones that are together you worm this tool into the skinny one Try it, it'll pop it open. And then you just keep prying. And it pops through. You'll get that guy open. And then you pull the pump assembly and everything out. Just, just set this off to the side for now. At this point, you'll just go ahead. So like if you're just gonna replace the pump and use your stock stuff, you're gonna pull that you're gonna pull this out. This is the feed to the filter. Um, and then you'll take this little screwdriver here, push the grommet through. Don't stab the wire unless your pump assembly is no good, I guess. Then it really doesn't matter. Um, I guess I'm always cautious of what I do, but yeah, you pop that grommet through, pull the pump assembly out, and all you would do at that point is you gotta reuse your grommet. You wanna try not to damage it. What you're gonna do. do, 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 do. Go ahead and snap that grommet back into the wires. Actually, don't do that. A little bit easier to do it this way. I forgot about it. Um, so you your wire back through. 
And then what you do, put your grommet on, because the taper is on this side. And then you'll feed it back through, just pop it back in with your finger. Pull the wire through. Oh, ah. don't pop it in with your finger, I guess. Don't work. It should have. I don't know why it didn't. There. It stayed that time. So anyway, you get that all set up. Make sure that you're it's not gonna get caught. Like an asshole. I guess it's gonna be a pain, but whatever. And then you're gonna line this piece back up to the pump. There's that tab that, that this piece lines up to. So the pump will sit in a specific way. Pull the wire through. For some reason I don't want to stay too good. And then, you're going to put your filter on. And that's got a recession in it right here that sits against the, the inlet or the outlet part. I think this is the pressure relief portion of it. Don't quote me, but I think I'm not an engineer, so it is what it is. Then you put your grommet on, and it gives your spacer. And then, I think, well, what you'd want to do at that point is take the old filter off that goes to the canister inlet itself and you got two tabs sorry I might have I popped this one out already so I got this tab here pop it in. so we'll start fresh so you pop this tab out get the canister come to the other side do the same thing oh pop the other side back in the process here this one's the more difficult side anyway, so we'll just do that one last. I guess if you're left-handed it might be backwards, but yeah, you release those tabs. There's an O-ring inside. That's the O-ring filter that they talk about, or the O-ring they talk about in the kit that I was showing you earlier. So that O-ring sits inside of here. And regardless if you're doing the bottleneck fix or not, you're still going to do this bottleneck fixes only for the pump outlet you still got your pump inlet and you pop the new guy on if it works there we go oh wow all right maybe the orange not right that'll be the case let's see oh, can't do that anymore Oh, he's in there. I don't know what to do this. Same right. Try again. <clears throat> That's being a real pain. So I'm just going to use this, push it on. So the pickup filter was being a pain in the butt, so I took a, took a break here for a minute. The O-ring didn't want to go over the lip, so what I did was I got myself some dielectric grease, put a little bit on my finger, I'll do a little more just to show you, and um, go around the O-ring quick here, get a little bit of grease in, around the O-ring and the plastic, help it kind of slide on a little easier. Still kind of being a pain, but at least at this point you can just set it, set it down. Try to get it to work with you. I got one side to lock on, and the second side. Uh, hopefully you guys seen that. I don't know, maybe the camera's too close, too far. I guess we'll see when I review it. Maybe I'll have to buy a screen so I can see exactly what you guys can see while I do this. Clean back up. Get rid of the old stuff. And then at that point, what well, all you would do is go ahead and slip this together. So that grommet is going to fit in that hole in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it through the camera where this pickup filter is or my fingers moving right now. That is the pickup spot. So that grommet, all that's going to do is sit just inside of there. 
Mix that together. Oh. That can slide off too if you got the sending unit. Still out of it, so you gotta make sure you put your hand on that. But anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that triangle spot here that lines up for the sending unit. You're gonna, oh, and then you're going to line that up to the triangle spot, cut in the hat, put your pump back in, line it back up anyway. back in pump will fall into that spot shove it all back together put your connectors back in um, we'll show that at the end of the video I'm gonna cut in here now because I'm not gonna put this together and then I'll take it all back apart just so I can do the bottleneck fix but um, so yeah this is how you would put it back together if you were just gonna use the stock filter and feed line with the returnless system but I'm not gonna do that so what I'm gonna do Route back through. You know, because we're getting rid of it, you got to block off the stock feed because if you don't, fuel can seep in through here and then find its way into the filter and then eventually drip its way out if the level was high enough. So there's a tab right here, you push, you squeeze that in, twist your filter, it'll hit a stop. And you just kind of wiggle it out, it can't be a pain in the butt, so wiggle it, whatever you got to do. It does come out. And then you can see there is the hole, let's see if you can see it, that hole, this hole right here is the hole that we got to, we got to um, plug off with that machine screw. At one point, there was there were manufacturers that had um, something they called it a queasy was performance. Um, I think it was P Works. Maybe it was uh, PTP. I can't remember anymore who made it. They called it a queasy. It was quick and easy, but it was a piece that they had machined that you could twist in here and then use that for the stock return. So it would actually return fuel back in through this hole to fill the basket back up. So if you wanted to do that, you could probably try and figure it out, but I'm not going to bother with that bit of it. So now I'm going to get this dried out and then we'll go ahead, I'll get the pump and everything set back in and we're going to go and bore the hole that I need for the feed. So I'll get this deck together and I'll bring you guys back in. So because we're doing a bottleneck fix, this is the bottleneck of the system. Your fuel feed is basically choking down to this little pee hole right here. Uh, we want that baby to be 3 eighths of an inch all the way through so we can actually get the fuel out that we need. Um, I have been, uh, we went 1184 on this bottleneck here. I know guys have been faster. Um, so I'm not saying that it's going to limit you to a whole bunch of stuff, but it will limit you at a certain point once you're trying to make about 400 or more. It is pretty ideal to try and get yourself um, away from this piece here. There is a retaining tab here, as well as another one on this side. For some reason, this side seems to be the easier one to work with to start. So basically, uh, because I don't have a pick set out here, and like I said, I was doing it with this pocket screwdriver, which is more obtainable or easily obtainable for everybody unless you go to Harbor Freight and you get a pick set, which it does make this job easier. But with the pocket screwdriver, just get behind one side of the tab, put a little pressure against it, hold it up. So we'll see how it's kind of pushed out a little bit. So that means it's kind of holding it. Do the same thing on this side, and then that lets go. Pop this guy right off, feed your wires through, and then this is the retainer that holds that on. So basically, you just gotta get that off. Get a real pain in the butt right now, give me a second here. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, it's got a tab or a pocket that it sits in. On this side, it's got a flat spot right here on the pump. So this spot rotates and sits on that flat spot so it don't sit there and spin on you. Tries to keep it on there so it won't just fall off. But once you get that spot free, take a screwdriver and kind of pry it open a little bit here. Or try to. Whatever you want to do to try and get this off. That's, that's what I do. I use one side and then I use my hand on the other. Push, push against the 
here's that lock to this part. I'll try and get that spread open, then you pull the o-ring off. We're not using that anymore. And then you would just put your submersible line on. Set that on. Get your clamp on. And we're gonna have a screwdriver over here. Can I So depending on the clamp you got, you're going to need another another tool here as well for the hose. So I'm doing, like I said, we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Take a little bit of precaution, I guess. I wasn't paying attention. I had mine super close to that ground wire. We definitely don't want anything happening to the connection. I'm just gonna loosen it and spin it a little bit here. I'm not happy with it. We're going to the other side. Keep everything contained. Just give it the old good tug and twist. Make sure everything's seated, not loose. Make sure that your barber is actually in a good spot. And luckily enough, my ear's actually right there. So just barely cleared with that connector. But like I said, you don't want to don't want to have it pointing at it and then have something rub through or whatever. But uh, yeah, so you get that set up. You just kind of set that down where he rides. Gonna be the bottom half of what we're working with. So now you get the idea of how much hose that you got to work with here. Once you got that set in, let me just go ahead and feed the wire through just so you can eyeball it up. I mean, I know where I want it to ride, but I'm just doing this so I can kind of show you guys where you need to be. So this is where it's gonna sit, but that hose is trying to come straight up. <coughs> Excuse me. to this point here so what I like to do is I put the hole right around in this area that way when I feed the hose up we're not putting a big kink or stress on the pump to make that hose move over here that way we can swing it out of the top in this big nice open area and go through and feed it above the electro connector right about here is where we're gonna end up putting our bulkhead fitting so that's where we're gonna be with that Go ahead and make our hole. Actually, it might be easier to go from the top. I'm not 100% on that. We'll find out. I'm actually, going to go get another tool so I can add on to this. All I did was make get an extension here. If you had a long bit, it wouldn't matter. You'd be in a pretty good spot. So we're gonna put the hole right about here. We 
got started. Actually, the other side to finish it. If I didn't have a dead battery, it'd probably work a little better. Bits aren't the best for plastic. <clears throat> that would be a Time for a new bit. It might be the case. Yeah, you gotta make sure you don't uh, any of that mess back in your system here. So, so we got our hole for the line to go through. I'm gonna go ahead and blow this off. Quick. All right. So we got the work area cleaned up, um, and I went ahead and I used my pocket screwdriver here, and I just kind of went around the edge and I picked it all off, make sure that there was no extra burrs or plastic pieces or anything that was floating around. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my grommet back on the fuel pump. Well, no, jumping out of myself again. I'm going to put the grommet on after I get the wires through here. I'm going to get this through. Grommet on. I don't think it really matters which way they go. They'll come through together anyway. Go ahead and take your fuel pump feed line, pull that through the lid, pull the wire, a little bit of hose, a little bit of wire, a little bit of hose. Let me get this rotated so we can get this line back up. So we had our fuel pump and everything put together already and the line was on it. So the bottom half, like I said, we were ready to go at that point with the new pickup filter on the inside. Just make sure that you don't lose this piece for the sending unit. It will slip off, but once you get to that point, you get everything set in, line it up, go ahead and snap it together. Because now you're ready to work on the outside. Just make sure that your pump sits to the bottom. Now what I like to do, like I said, because it's the least stress that you can put on the hose, is to run it with the barb right about here. And what ends up happening is once the barb is on, it kind of sits right around this area here. So you got a very small distance that it has to skip over so we could take the least take the most amount of stress away from where we're working. So now it is all kind of fitting. I think it's yeah, it looks like a 916 hole will do it. Maybe a 5/8. So I'm gonna go 916 first. See where that puts me. And we're gonna want it probably say we're gonna want it right about between the nine and the seven there for the tip. So we'll go right there. Get 
started. Put your hose away so you don't have to worry about damaging it. Nope, that one step of the bit is really wore out. Shit stuck in my beard. Turn it a little bit more. I don't think that fit. Okay, so getting this cleaned up here a little bit. Um, on the inside, there's a little bit of webbing. You do have to knock that down to get that bottleneck fitting to fit flat to it. So you could use a Dremel or something similar. Um, sanding disc, but I'm gonna use these dikes. Kind of just cut the plastic back, break it away. And then pliers to pull it through with. Besides being a pain, so I'm going to use a little razor blade here quick. Cut it off. Razor blade also works for a little bit of trimming if you need a little bit of clearance. And use your pliers to just grab the remainder and break it off. Get that to fit flat. Like so. Push your washer on. Alright. So, we got all tabs cleaned off. I did just run this in quick, make sure that it's going to sit flat so it is in a good spot there. Um, so we're clean. We're scot free. I'm going to use this washer to seal on the outside. But, um, so that's going to be the feed. And then the return is usually easier if you could just pick a spot to dump it. So in the car, it sits roughly like this. So we got a feed coming out. Usually running the return high is a good way to go if you can. With, the, with this feed here, that is, like I said, usually with this feed, that's the way to go. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put it down in here. But it's easier to find a spot where you don't have any of the webbing. So you don't have to play with it or fight with it. And you could just do it either right next to the connector here or you can go a little bit higher next to the filter. Depending on what kind of space you got to work with. I'm going to put this one up back higher by the filter. Um, just so it's easier to 
deal with and it's at a much higher level. So it looks like right about here is going to be ideal for the return. I guess I could have went one size smaller on the other one, but I might still have to do a chamfer on this. Oh, there is a little bit of a chamfer on the fitting. Let's see. Yeah. It, it rocks a little bit, but it'll tighten up. But yeah, I could have went a little tighter on the small on the bottom uh, feed line, I guess, but we'll be okay. It's only one. Maybe even a sixteenth of an inch is all I did with there, so that washer will still it's bigger than the hole. So so that one's that one right here. That one, yeah, see it's still bigger than the outer perimeter of that one. So we're good to go, no worries. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and blow this off again, so I'll be right back. Okay, so got everything cleaned up. Now we're getting ready to go back together. Um, so I got my bulkhead fitting here. What I like to do is put the nut on the outside because with that shank on the inside, you're taking space away from that hose to kind of flex over, essentially making that connection longer this way than it would be going this way. So like I said, go ahead and do the long side out, the washer on it, spin the nut on. Center out that washer a bit though. And it's a 7 8. At least the ones I got are. If you get a different dash 6 bulkhead, it may be a different thread size. I can't, can't promise you on that one. Some of the ones I got here, they are 7 8. So your bulkhead fitting in. You add your barb dash 6 to barb fitting. That one, the vibrant, is an 11 16th. So what you gotta do, you gotta play with it a little bit here. Try and get a wrench in on it, somehow. itself in plastic but we'll see. So get your fitting on here, get that tightened down. Watch me fumble here for a minute. Okay, so that's tight. How what you want to do is kind of eyeball where you want to cut your hose. So I got mine set in here. I think we're gonna cut it off right about this rib. In my hand. So whatever you got, whether you got side cutters or scissors or whatever, hose cutters like this, or the straight long ones. Cut it. Make sure you get your clamp on before you put it together. Kind of like flying a brake line. So I like to use stainless, that way it don't get eaten up inside the tank. And then, maneuver it around. Get the hose set on here. Like I said, I like to keep it away from the wires. Where they're gonna end up going is going to be... Actually, they're probably just gonna go this way anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, because of the cinder. So that really don't matter. But keep it inside. I should have did it the other way. Actually, I'm gonna. So yeah, learn from my mistakes, guys. A little bit better to have this clamp on from the opposite side. That way you can keep it inside. And that'd be something to work against. When you go to put it back in the tank. There we go. So we got some space around the line. That way we're not, I mean, it's a little tighter there, but like I said, it's got room to settle and everything. Once you get pressure in it, it'll probably flex it up a little bit and push it back out this way, but. So that is going to be our feed line. And then the return, doesn't have to be anything crazy. That one you can actually just uh, do the bottleneck, no fancy fittings. So again, push it in through, wash it on it. Set the washer up. Seven eighths. Well, don't work for me, so what we're gonna do. And hold it. My wrench. Actually, it's not going to work too good, is it? Or 22 if you only have 178, so you can also use a 22, it is the same size. Don't get too crazy, you don't want to break the washer or split it or anything like that. So now, there's your return fitting. Like I said, what you want to do with this hole here, I'm going to use an old piece of plastic. JV Weld. I don't make a mess. And I got something I can throw away and not keep around. Okay, so you want to mix it one to one. We don't need a whole bunch. We're just painting some threads. But definitely put your lid back on. You want to dry it out. It's, I mean, it sucks to go buy $15 worth of this stuff. Use it once and then throw it away. So, a couple small spurts like that on the plastic. Make sure that you get your stuff together because once you start mixing it, you don't have a whole bunch of time. This stuff sets up here in about six minutes. <clears throat> so you're gonna start mixing. It's gonna turn a gray color. It's okay to be generous with it. If you're going to mix it up, you might as well use it.
and get it set up on your tool. Help you guide it in. You see, you get the screw in the hole, get it kind of centered up, try to thread it. Eventually, it will bite. There it goes. Just thread that guy in. It's a bit tight. And that's that. So now that's ready to go. Let me clean this off before you're done. That way you don't ruin the tool. Some guys use uh, toothpicks or popsicle sticks or whatever and they all work. I just use this because wipe it off and I'm ready to go. I'm not always looking for something. So now that we've gotten to this point, we're pretty much ready to go back together with everything now. Um, so you put your center back in, so you find your wire track, get those guys through, do, 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 do. and then on the back of the center there's a channel that the wire sits under, and it does that so it can cross over and not stress or damage the wire or get caught on anything. So make sure that you got the wire sitting inside of that track. I've just seen it. Let me show you here. There's that track on the back. Make it easier here. So like I said, just make sure that you got your wires there. It's got to be all the way up. Oh, actually I'm an idiot. There's a the wire actually going underneath of it. There we go. And then you just take this groove here, or this uh, raised area. Line it up to the groove in the canister. Make sure that your wires are in the track. You said you don't want to pinch them or break them or damage them. Just kind of dance your way in. Pull the wires through. Make sure that you're going to feed. There you go. You hear it snap in, and that's it. Oh, maybe, not. maybe not. This one don't want to stay. Put a little bit of pressure against it. There we go. So there's your sender. And you feed your wire in between the feed and return ports from the stock fittings. Take this guy over, and then, like I said, with ours, the connector we took apart black was right, left was red, so black was right, black or left was red. You do your two sending unit connector or terminals here. Oh, or you can be pan, but I don't know what your deal is. But In. Feed the other one in here. Show you guys how it goes. So it's got a taper on it. You want the taper to go towards the lock side, and you want the tallest part to go against the back row here. So you see how this is flat, and this side's got the cutout. This is the taper, so the lock is on this side. So you need the, the smaller or the shorter side of the taper on the lock side of the connector. So, I don't know if I'm going with it here. I'm trying to see if you guys can see this on the camera while I do it. Wow, I can't even grab a wire. Jesus. Okay. Get it lined up. Feed it in, you'll hear it lock. Give it a tiny tug just to make sure that you're seated and they're not going to pull back. Don't get crazy, don't want to pull the wire out. And then you have your oh, where did it go? There it is. That lock or the uh, lock retainer. Once everything is seated, this keeps those lock pins from pulling back. Definitely want that in there. Go ahead and reconnect it to your stuff here. And you're good to go. So now this wire will sit. Clear your connector or clear your hose clamp. 
and we are good to go to put this piece back in the car. Now that is going to be your bottleneck fix. And like I said, this stuff set about five to seven minutes or five to five to six minutes, I think it said to set up. Um, I don't know where the paper went to see what it. Let me see here. Mixture will set in four minutes. If temperature below 40, set time will be longer. And I thought it said something about like five or six hours to a full cure time. But uh, you should be okay to go ahead and stick this back in the car. I can't imagine that the 15 or 20 minutes that you're fumbling with it's going to cause any difference there. So like I said, this is ready to go. All right, guys. So we got the canister and everything loaded, ready to go back into the car. Um, we got everything connected, sending units on, filters are on, ready to go. At this point, you have the option to go with whatever line or filter setup you want. Um, I'm going to set my buddy up with the same system that I used or the same setup I used. I actually used a Summit filter, and then I also used some more of that push-to-lock line with the Summit twist-tight fittings and a Vibrant fitting to the stock feed line. Um, that way, he can just use his own return line, use the stock feed. That's no issue there. He's already got his Boomba rail. Everything is connected, so we're just kind of adding an in line to uh, improve what's there and make sure that we got our filter. So what you need to do that is this Vibrant fitting here. This is a Vibrant 16881. This is the feed line, or the fuel line adapter fitting. This is a 3 8 You can get a Russell, Jags, Summit, whoever. Um, I've had good luck with the Vibrant stuff. And like I said, to do this exactly how I did, you need two 150 degree fittings, two 90 degree fittings, the Summit filter and then some of this AeroQuip push lock hose. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get that going here. So, let's see here, where is my cutters? I just I don't know why I didn't see them. So we're just copy making everything how I had it before. Oh, there's not a bunch of stuff on the floor, oh well. And that is going to be from the canister to the filter. And then we go from the filter to stock feed line. That line, that's going to be a little bit longer. I would say if I could use that there. Copy it, that would have been nice, but why would I have done something so simple? Cool. So we're good to go there. Okay. Just had all these fittings in my hands. Longer one's gonna be my 90s. Shorter one's gonna be my. One fifties. Well, sorry. Got out of my mind there for a second looking around.
I'll make this easy for you guys. I'll measure exactly what we got here. So the long hose that I used to go from the canister to the filter, I cut it at nine inches. And from the filter to the stock feed line, I cut that one at seven and three quarters. So you guys can see it. So yeah, nine inches, seven and three quarters. Um, that's how long I cut these. So the nine inch one is going to be canister to filter. Seven and three quarters is going to be filter to stock feed line. Started. I'll just take them over to the vice at the same time. take these in the vise and finish these off and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've got our lines done, uh, we got our fitting on here. All you need to do at this point is take this clip off of the fuel filter, your stock fuel filter, and this is what is going to lock the line to the stock feed line. Go ahead and get that popped off, set that over, and you are ready to rock, man. Basically, you just go ahead, you get this put in the car. That's the return. Sorry, I'm gonna put this together wrong right away. Thread this on. Runs down to the filter. Get your filter set up. And then you go from your filter back up. You take it from the filter and then you can swing it up like this, kind of take it back. And then you end up hooking it into, this is, close representation but it sits like this and then bam right back into the factory feed line and then you are ready to party so anyways I hope that helped you guys out uh, I don't like I said I don't know what options you're gonna take for fuel lines fuel filters this is just what I did quick easy setup um, we've proven it up to almost 80 pounds of fuel pressure so far with no leaks so I do like this push lock pose Thanks for checking in with us today, guys. Uh, hopefully this video helps anybody out trying to replace a fuel pump going to a stock system or if they want to do the bottleneck fix and follow the same path we did for a filter option. Um, I will put a link in the description with all the part uh, part numbers. Um, and you can get, I got everything that I purchased. We got right from Summit Racing. I buy from them and usually, you know, I'm lucky enough where they have a warehouse in Ohio. So I'm only in Michigan um, and it only takes me about a day, maybe two days to get parts. Um, so definitely uh, check those guys out if you want to get any of these parts. I'll have that list there ready to go. It will be a complete list. Um, I'll, I'll put in a list of the tools and stuff as well in the description. But uh, definitely, definitely thanks guys for checking it out. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, like the video, comment if you have any questions. Definitely check out our Facebook and our Instagram. Now, also, we have a contest going on right now. We did reach our 100 subscribers. We're doing a giveaway with MI Tuning. Definitely check out that video for the contest. I'll probably put a pop-up right here where my hand is with the video. You can go in there and watch that, see the details, get your entry in there, and hopefully win yourself a credit towards some tuning. You guys have a good one. Thanks, and we'll see you with the track.